Hi, this is Charlene Mosier from Sound Sewing Silverdale, Washington, and the Foff Creative Sewing Center, Lacey, Washington. Today, I'm actually going to demo to you the Husqvarna Viking Opal 690Q. This machine is a nice, great uh, quilting machine, crafting machine, a home garment, anything that you'd like to do. It has a wide range of features and stitches for all kinds of sewing. So if we open up the lid here, you can examine how it has quite a bit of uh, built-in stitches. There are actually over 200 built-in stitches in here, from tapering stitches to buttonholes to utility, quilting, and decorative. So you can have all sorts of fun. So by using decoratives, you make these cute things like doll clothes, where I have done pin tucking using the pin tuck foot, and then a built-in decorative stitch between the pin tucks. Also used a rolled hem foot to get this really nice narrow hem on both the skirts. You also have the quilting features built in, so you could do your appliques and use your blanket stitch with the pivoting motion that this machine has. And then you can also use decorative stitches to help uh, decorate your flower pots, like I did there. The other thing is, this is a very strong machine, so doing stuff like three-dimensional pinwheels, which would have six layers on each one of these four corners in the middle. So that would be 24 layers when you come through the middle and this machine will handle sewing through all of that to make your, your crafting and your bag making really easy. So this machine here has about eight inches inside the throat. It has a nice needle threader. It has a LED light on the side. You can raise and lower the feed dogs on the outside of the machine, but it is right in front, so it's a real easy push to the right and to the left. The storage tray is located in the back. It comes directly off, and then it also has a very nice categorized uh, tray as well as storage underneath. So today we're going to show you how to do the buttonhole. So when we get the buttonhole foot out, the auto, if I put this tray back in, we are also going to do a blind hem. So I'll get the blind hem foot out and we are going to do free motion quilting. So I'm going to get out the free motion quilting foot as well. This machine, because it does say quilt on it, does also come with the Husqvarna quilting quarter inch foot. And then your other feet are your manual, uh, buttonhole foot, your zipper foot, and then the rest are for your decorative sewing. Um, with the exception of this one, this one, J, is your overcast foot. So you could do overcasting. I like how the bobbins have their own little independent little spots so they don't intermingle together. The tray just closes and comes directly back here and then just slides directly in. So right now I do have the utility foot on and I can come in and just do a standard straight stitch as soon as I grab my fabric. So when I turn on the machine, it goes directly to straight stitch and I could come in here and this machine does not have a pressure foot lifter. So I actually have where I could just start to sew and the foot will come directly down and start to sew for me. Or I also have the pressure foot up. If I press up again, it'll give me an extra high lift. I could press down or down again to give me the hover so I can fine tune my placement and then start to sew. This one also has a sensormatic uh, pressure foot lift. So that means if I uh, lower my needle, which I just did by tapping my foot control, my foot came up so I can pivot. And that way I can control it any time and get these really nice sharp cur curves. That also helps you when you're doing blanket stitch on these apple case here is anytime I want to pivot with my needle down, I just would move the foot around. So I would actually use my needle down so I could just, every time I stop, it will stop up and I just turn a little bit more. And that just makes it a little bit more faster for you. It also makes it more comfortable. I do have a scissor cut, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissor cut right now. And what we're going to get ready to do now is to do a buttonhole. So these feet actually pull towards you to come out. They're not a standard push down, it's a pull towards you. And then I'm going to get the foot, the buttonhole foot, and this one has what's called a crown on it. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a white crown directly on it. So if I turn away from the crown, the crown's gone, and now the crown's back. So anytime I start, I need to make sure that my crown is up for my buttonhole, because that's how it gauges the length of my buttonhole. So I'm just going to put this foot in. I put it in front of the ankle and push directly back. I find where my foot plugs into, which there is a little divot back here behind the threader. 
It's there, I promise. There it is. And I just push it straight up. I'm gonna come over here to my screen. This one has a stylus on the side if you choose to use it. Just stores directly on the side of the screen or you can use your fingernail. So to find where I wanna go, I can use my panel up here and I see my buttonholes are right here on the top. And coming over here, it says number one. I come across and here's my first standard buttonhole. I come down and it says 25. So I'm in menu one, number 25. So on my screen, I'm already in menu one and I type 25 and I say okay. And there is my buttonhole uh, stitch. You will see that it is symbolizing that the, the foot that I have on, if I did not have my foot plugged in all the way, it would not show that. It would show the 5M for manual. I would also tell it the length. So down here, I can change my length. So I'm gonna to go to 18 millimeters. So if I was doing a 16 millimeter button where it says it right on the, the package, I need to increase it at least by two millimeters. And then my width of this one is five millimeters wide. If you don't know the size of your button directly down here on the base of my machine, I have this built-in ruler, which also has the metric system for buttons itself. And it shows a round circle here for actually the buttons. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to come right on in and I'm going to again make sure my crown is up and I'm going to lower my foot. Now this machine does have a start stop key. I am going to use it but to make sure the machine doesn't go too fast I am going to uh, use my speed control. So over here on my screen I see these bars and these bars are telling me right now I'm at full speed. So if I come to speed and I minus it, I can slow down, I, I lost some of those bars. So now I'm going to press start. We have a little cat in here that's trying to get in the video. Her name's Bear, if you see her. <laughs> there she goes, she knocked over my doll. <laughs> cat's not included. Yeah, cat's not included, good point, Anne. and pays attention to us when we start filming. They come out and here's my buttonhole. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. So I'm just going to unplug it. Remember to pull the foot towards you. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this under my tray, put it away. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a blind hem. And the blind hem on this one takes foot D. So a blind hem you can use on the bottom of slacks and skirts or doll clothes just to do that nice hem that you normally would do by hand. But hand in my life is a four letter word. I try not to do anything by hand. I rather do it on my machine. It's stronger, faster, and just gives a nicer look. So let's say I don't know where that, that stitch is and I don't know how to set it up. This machine here has exclusive to the Husqvarna Viking brand is what's called a fabric advisor. So if I touch this sewing machine up here, it says, what fabric am I going to use? Well, I have medium woven already selected. Now I'm going to go into techniques and I'm going to say, I want to do a blind hem. Then I'm going to come out of here and the machine has already set up the stitch at the correct length and width and tension for the fabric I have told that I want to do. And it's telling me I should use foot D. So pretty nice, very user friendly. So you use a wide range of fabrics. And if you don't know how to set up your machine, use the machine to set it up for you. I'm going to put my speed all the way back up because I'm going to use my foot control. I've already folded this for the blind hem. So the blind hem would just be folded directly up. And <laughs> Hi bear, come on bear. <laughs> and then I have uh, tucked my raw edge in underneath to get a finished hem. So I did it just like the book, except for I tucked my hem in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and put this down and I am just gonna line up my hem to this part of my foot. That's all I need to do on this machine. It already is on what's called the bite. So if I needed to adjust it, I can, but I find the Viking doesn't need to be adjusted. So I'm just going to start to stitch here. And pulling out my pins, never sew over your pins. It dulls your needles really quick. 
And now I'm gonna use my scissor cut on my machine. And so now I have all these bites here, and then when I open it up, I can see, because I made a thread this time that can be visible, where all my bites were. So if I did this uh, with a matching thread, you would never see it. And I would have a really nice, strong blind hem. So that's your blind hem. I'm going to take that foot off, and now I am going to go to Sensormatic Free Motion. So that is the R foot. I'm going to come and put this foot directly on. On this machine, you can free motion with a wide range of um, stitches. I'm going to just do a straight stitch. So I'm going to just uh, come directly into my menu right up here and come back to, I'm still in menu one, so I'm going to come back to stitch one and I'm going to say okay. Now I'm going to go into my configure here and I'm going to tell it that I want to do the free motion floating. That is the foot that comes with it. And I'm going to close my menu. And then it's letting me know now that I have the free motion. Now, I did do a, um, a fabric visor before, so I just want to make sure that I am on the same kind of fabric I want to be on, and I am. Okay, so, so something else I'm going to do is I'm going to just take off my cover here because I used my button, my thread cutter last time, and I want to make sure I have a nice long tail. So this machine, you cannot put the bobbins in backwards. So I cannot put this in and try to get it in the wrong way. If you're using a Husqvarna green bobbin, it will go in the correct way. Um, it will only fit one way, which is the correct way. And when I go into my tension, I come and do this long loop. My cover here is a magnifier, so if I need to use a magnifier, I can. And I'm going to put that on and cut my thread. Now I'm going to put my quilt in here. So again, this is an 8-inch throat in here. So a little bit more room. Most machines are five and a half to six inches. So this one being eight gives me a little bit more flexibility. I'm going to lower my pressure foot and I am going to bring up my bobbin thread. As a quilter, I always do that. And I always do this too. I always forget to top, pull my top one down. That's okay, I'm getting pretty good at pulling it through because I always forget. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I need to lower my feed dogs. This machine will not do it for me, but it's right in front, so I'm just gonna flip this switch. I heard them go down. Now I'm gonna hold on to both my tails, <laughs> as soon as my hands work with me, and then my foot pops up, so I can come in here and do my free motion work. Use your speed control to help get you to a comfortable speed. But once you get comfortable with it, it's just a real nice, pretty relaxing movement. It takes a little practice, but I find it very relaxing now. Okay, and then when I'm done, again, after I do some free motion work, I don't use my thread cutter because I want to be able to pull up that bobbin very easily. So I'm just going to trim it with my, my threads. And then you can see I've done some free motion work. This machine also has some wonderful decorative stitches. And to get to those, you would actually go through to your other menus. So if I was to now get out my B decorative foot, unfortunately that one was my A. I think that one's it right there. Now this one's actually an open toe foot, but that will work. So to get to my different stitches, for instance, if I wanted to do the travel trailer, that was pretty fun. That was in category four, number 34. So I'm gonna go up to my stitch menu. I'm gonna go to number four. That's the category, stitch 34. And there he is, a little travel trailer. Now, if you notice, it's not telling me to put foot to put on because I'm still in my sensormatic. I didn't turn it off. So I need to come back in here into my tools, to turn off my sensormatic and then come back out. Now it tells me foot B. The other things I do need to remember to raise my feed dog, so I just need to push that over to the right. And then this would do my travel trailers. So 
I just press what's called my stop key, and when it gets to the end of the trailer, it's going to stop, and it's going to then just allow me to use my cut. And then I have these cute little travel trailers. They are so adorable. A lot of fun uh, decorative stitches in here. A fantastic fabric advisor. And the fabric advisor, again, will go anywhere from light woven all the way up to leather vinyl. Your techniques will include seaming, overcasting, basting, blind hem, buttonholes. So a lot of great features in there. And if you don't know where to set it by telling the fabric and what you're doing, it'll automatically set the width, the length, and the tension, and the amount of pressure on your pressure foot. Fantastic machine for any sewer.